What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is the series where I go into great detail with all of the stats, as well as some excellent attachment combinations for every gun in Modern Warfare 2. And in today's episode, we're going to be covering the brand new battle rifle that came with Season 3. This is the Cronin Squall. And starting it off as always, let's have a look at our damage profile, and we're going to start this off with our full auto damage profile, since that's what this gun starts with by default. And with this, it will be a 3 to 4 shot kill to the body, and it's also worth noting we just have limb multipliers as well as torso multipliers. There's no separate upper torso multiplier, so it's quite forgiving here. And also, in the maximum damage range, we can get a 2 shot kill if both of the shots hit the head. Now, moving into our rate of fire, in full auto, this is 674 rounds per minute, but it is also worth noting we do have a pre-fire delay of 45 milliseconds. So when you pull the trigger, there will be a 45 millisecond delay before that first shot is fired. And this is the only battle rifle in the game that has this characteristic. As for our theoretical time to kill, keeping in mind I didn't factor in this pre-fire delay, this is 178 milliseconds with a 3-shot kill, which is very fast and competitive. And then with a 4-shot kill, this will increase up to 267 milliseconds. So in full auto, I would say this is a decent battle rifle, but now let's have a look at semi-auto. And with this, we have a totally different damage profile. We now have three separate body multipliers. We have limb damage, lower torso damage, and upper torso damage. And with this, in the maximum damage range, it'll be a two-shot kill as long as one of those bullets hits the torso, anywhere in the torso, whether that's lower or upper. And then beyond that, it is going to be a two to three shot kill, depending on whether or not you're hitting your upper torso shots. And it's also worth noting with headshots in the maximum damage range, this will be a one shot kill to the head as long as you're in semi-auto mode. As for a rate of fire, we do once again have that same pre-fire delay. This doesn't change when you swap between the modes. It's still 45 milliseconds. However, our rate of fire cap is now 417 rounds per minute, which is a pretty solid fire rate for semi-auto. And what this means is with a two-shot kill, we're killing just 144 milliseconds, which is very fast, and that will increase up to 288 milliseconds for a three-shot kill. So overall, it looks like semi-auto at least has a better killing potential, but full auto is obviously going to be a bit more forgiving. Next up, let's have a look at a range breakdown and a comparison between semi-auto and full auto, since there are very small range differences here. And as we can see, we get very slightly better range drop-off points with full auto, but again, with semi-auto, we do get a better time to kill potential overall, since we can kill in two shots rather than three. Next, before we get into recoil, let's get into idle sway, and I just wanted to point out that this does have a fair amount of idle sway, just like the other battle rifles, and you probably want to get this under control with attachments. And now let's have a look at our recoil comparison, and the recoil will obviously vary from full auto to semi-auto here. And when we have a look at the side-by-side -side comparison, in full auto, it kicks pretty much straight upwards for the first several bullets, and then it starts to curve a little bit to the left, whereas in semi-auto, there's a bit of a gap between the first and second shot fired that you definitely want to be aware of, and it's interesting, it actually kicks a little bit to the right rather than the left when you're using it in semi-auto. Obviously, the total magnitude is also significantly reduced in semi-auto, and that's just due to the fact that our fire rate cap is much lower than the full auto fire rate. And with that, that finally wraps it up for the differences between full auto and semi-auto. Everything from here on out will apply to both of those fire modes, including hip fire. And when we look at the hip fire here, it's got a pretty standard hip fire spread for the battle rifles in the game. Also, our bullet velocity is very normal for battle rifles and excellent at 660 meters per second. And then let's get into our handling stats. Our aim down sight speed is just a little bit slower than average at 285 milliseconds. This isn't terrible by any means for a battle rifle. Our sprint out time, on the other hand, is exceptional for battle rifles at 140 milliseconds for our standard sprint out time and 250 milliseconds for our tactical sprint out time. This is closer to SMGs than any other weapon category out there. However, I do think one of the reasons we have a faster sprint out time is unlike the other battle rifles, we have that pre-fire delay of 45 milliseconds. So in practical terms, you would add that pre-fire delay to your sprint out time, and that would give you your true experience sprint out time of 185 milliseconds. Which, even when you do that, that's still better than all of the other battle rifles in the game. After that though, let's have a look at our reload add time, and unfortunately, this is the slowest reload time in the battle rifle category at 2.20 seconds. And then let's get into our movement speeds, and when it comes to our base movement speeds, as well as our sprint movement speed, these are both noticeably below average for battle rifles. However, our aim walking movement speed is by far the best in the battle rifle category at 2.58 meters per second. And with that, that's going to wrap it up for all of the important base stats with the Cronin Squall. Now let's move on to some unique attachments, and we're going to start this off with the barrel attachments and how they impact our damage ranges. And I'm just going to show you what the damage ranges look like in full auto. Keep in mind, we still get the same percentage increases or reductions with semi-auto here. 
But you can see the first barrel will reduce our ranges by 6%. The second barrel increases our ranges by 20%. And the third barrel gives us the best range increase at 28%. As for how these barrels impact our recoil, while they all technically change the recoil values to some degree, none of them really seem to have a massive impact on the recoil you experience, so I probably wouldn't be using barrels with the express purpose of changing our recoil. But then finally, let's have a look at how they impact our aim down sight speeds, and with this, the first barrel gives us a slight improvement to our aim down sight time, whereas the other two barrels will very noticeably harm our aim down sight time. Additionally, I wanted to take a look at the different magazine attachments, and with the 30 round mag, this will slow our aim down sight time down to 307 milliseconds, whereas with that 50 round drum, this will slow it all the way down to 351 milliseconds. So while I may consider a 30 round mag depending on the setup I'm going for, I'm not likely going to go with a 50 round drum, at least for regular multiplayer. Now on top of those attachments, we have a couple other unique attachments that are only on this gun in this game. The first one is an ammo type, and this is the 6.8 composite ammo. And with this, we get an increase in our ammo reserve from 60 rounds up to 80 rounds. So we basically just get an extra magazine. Our aim down sight speed is very slightly improved, but only by six milliseconds, so hardly even noticeable. And it's a similar story with our sprint out time. There is a slight improvement there. Although I wouldn't say it's really necessary with this gun. And the downsides with this are a 3% reduction to our damage range and a bit of a reduction to our bullet velocity down to just under 600 meters per second. Overall, I wouldn't say it's a bad attachment, but at the same time, I just think there's a lot of better attachments out there, and therefore, I don't really see myself using this a whole lot. Additionally, we have a brand new underbarrel attachment for the Cronin Squall, and this is the SPW 40mm Drill, and this shoots a drill charge so it can drill through walls just like a drill charge can and kill enemies on the other side. And this is pretty neat, it does help with recoil stabilization a little bit as well, and for the downside, it says it harms our aim down sight speed, and based on my hand testing at least, this either doesn't really affect your aim down sight speed at all, or it's just a very minor adjustment. We're talking like at most 10 milliseconds here. So this is definitely a pretty cool, yet somewhat gimmicky attachment that you may want to play around with with this gun. And with that, we can finally move into some excellent attachment combinations I've got for you guys. And the first one I want to share is my preferred semi-auto build. And I actually prefer using this gun in semi-auto, even though it's full auto by default, primarily for that one-shot kill potential to the head. Now with this setup, we're using the Tempest GH50 muzzle, which helps with vertical recoil control, which you definitely want on this gun because of that first shot jump. You want to get that as under control as possible, and this is going to give you the best shot at reducing that. We also have the LR 6.8 22-inch barrel, which will give us a 20% increase to our damage range. And this means our one-shot headshot potential is now 36 meters, which is excellent. We've got the Schlager Peck Box 4 on here because I don't want a visible laser, but I do want some help with my aim down sight speed. We've got the Slimline Pro Optic, and then finally the B66 Pad. And with all of this combined, our aim down sight speed is very noticeably slower than the base at 386 milliseconds. That is still a reasonable aim down sight time for a gun that has a one shot kill potential or two shot to the body at least. You're obviously not going to be rushing around like a madman with this setup and that's totally fine. Our sprint out time is unchanged, but that means it's still incredible. And you can see our recoil is very significantly improved with this as well, especially that first shot jump, which is very, very important with semi-auto on this gun. And yeah, this is just an excellent setup and by far my preferred method of running the Cronin Squall so far. Now, even though I prefer using this gun in semi-auto, it's still very viable in full auto. So I wanted to share a good full auto build for you guys as well. And this one is designed to be a little more aggressive. With this, we once again are using that Tempest GH50 muzzle. That just seems to be the best overall for this gun. We've got a commando foregrip to help with a bit of stabilization as well. The OLEV laser, because I want the best aim down sight improvement possible here. And even though the laser is visible, if you're being aggressive and not just pre-aiming things, this shouldn't be an issue for you. We do have a 30 round magazine on this as well. That just helps a bit with full auto so you can deal with multiple enemies and then finally we have the x10 grip on here and with all this combined our new aim down sight speed is 330 milliseconds which is reasonable enough for a battle rifle our sprint out time is insanely fast at 106 milliseconds and our recoil is very nicely improved here as we can see especially with those initial like seven or eight shots fired which you should be able to finish your kill within that seven or eight shots and just keep in mind, if you're looking at the side-by-side -side comparison there, I'm firing 30 rounds here rather than 20, and yet we're still getting a comparable magnitude of recoil. And with that, that's going to wrap it up for today's gun guide on the Cronin Squall. As for my thoughts on this gun, 
I like it. I think it's pretty good. I don't think it's the best battle rifle in the game, largely due to the fact that it has that 45 millisecond pre-fire delay. That is something that really does cause me to miss a lot of shots in the game, especially if I'm really trying to line up a shot on a moving target in semi-auto. Maybe I'm trying to get that perfect headshot. I do often find that when I pull the trigger, I'm on target, but by the time the gun goes off, that person has now moved and I miss my shot because of that. But outside of that particular area, I still think this is an excellent battle rifle. It's got an amazing one-shot headshot potential in semi-auto mode, which is my preferred mode, like I said. And if you guys haven't given it a shot yet, I definitely recommend it. Now, that is just my opinion of this gun, and I'd love to hear what you guys think about it in the comments down below. And also, if you guys have missed any of the previous episodes of Gun Guides, I've covered every gun in the game aside from the intervention. I will leave a link to the playlist down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.